This video is just a quick one about self-acceptance and when we can't accept a situation about ourselves, it means we're battling. This video is inspired by a conversation I just had not too long ago with a female who responded to my video where I talk about the melisma on my face and how I've had to come to accept it. And we spoke about her struggling with acceptance of her condition and that led on to a conversation about what I regard is emotional constipation. That's like when we bottle up how we feel about situations, it can have an adverse impact on our body because if we've bottled up our feelings, where else can it go? These things need to be expressed and if they're not expressed, if they're not released from us, if you're someone who internalizes your pain, then it's got nowhere else but to turn on the body and that's why you know, I'm not surprised by the article I saw this weekend that says there's some um, queries about I IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, um, that it may not actually be a condition. If I've got that wrong, do comment below or refer back to the article. Um, because when we internalise, then there is no place for our frustrations, our hurts, our concerns, our worries to go. So it ends up impacting on our bodies, it impacts on our health. So things like cold sores, you know, um, grinding of teeth, being told that you have to wear a mouth guard by your dentist is also really important examples, potentially of emotional constipation, I call that. Not a fond thought, but actually I feel that that word really sums it up particularly well. But in addition, we spoke about how not accepting the situation, it's, it's actually, you know, okay, because you're actually battling with that. And I spoke about acceptance being a process, because the problem with acceptance, it means that we give up hope of how things would be how we want them to be in our mind's eye, the fantasy that we have. And the reason why I think that's one of the reasons why hope acceptance is so difficult is because we have to give up hope that things could be different. Is drawing a line under it. And also when we go into a place of acceptance about a situation, it also means that it can trigger off the grieving process. And that grieving process goes through five stages. I actually brought it up on my phone and probably won't be able to find it, but here you go. The five stages of grief, right? Which is denial, anger, bargaining. That's when we want to try and find a different way. Then we get depressed and then we come to a place of acceptance. So if you're struggling with self-acceptance, it may mean that you need to, you know, if you're struggling with self-acceptance, you may be in self-denial, you may be angry, you may be fighting that. But a grieving process also needs to take place. Because that's, hopefully, if you can get through that and not be fearful or not try to constantly make everything positive. Because that's another thing I see that holds people, um, that can be very detrimental and it doesn't sound like it. Being positive. But the the... The nonsense of this kind of positive psychology movement is that what you're doing is constantly reframing negative things to make them OK. And actually, you know, suffering is a part of life because life exists with both bipolar opposites. So you have happy and sad, night, day, joy, sadness, like you can't experience one without the other day, night. It's really important that we get a grasp on that, that actually life is about suffering. But also if you can accept that, it also means that you can um, experience joy because it's a, it's a part of life. So we spoke about, and this is what I really want to conclude on, that actually giving back to other people who are going through similar situations, because we spoke about, you know, do you have a support group? Where can you go to get help? And my sense was that she struggled to find one. One she went into was quite depressing and unhelpful, which started to bring her down. And so I spoke about um, 
I guess some of the teachings I've learned from a book called Conversations with God, which talks about like be what you most need. Like so if those groups you've gone into those groups maybe on Facebook and found them unhelpful, what's the type of group that you would want? And then maybe create it. Because that's one way to help ourselves is that we make difficult, we take meaning from it. It becomes purposeful. So yeah, you're gonna have bad days. Yeah, you're going to have days where you don't feel like getting out of bed and that's absolutely fine based on kind of what you're going through. Accept that, accept that as a part of the process. But also we do have other choices. And so one way to empower yourself in a situation that you don't want to accept, that you're battling with, is to assist others. Now that's not going to be for everybody, but if you have a heart for it, if you want to reach out to other people um it is one way to make our own suffering purposeful and so you can actually that sets you into a process where you help others and that they help you and i liken that to being a therapist where actually you know over the years like i've been through my adverse and ex- a diverse experience as a young mother a young woman in a, an abusive relationship but actually i'm not I don't regret that relationship. I've got like no hatred towards my ex because that relationship has been a catalyst for my career. So I made a difficult, I found meaning and purpose in that difficult situation. I didn't want it. It wasn't something I've welcomed and I can still struggle with um, aspects of being a single parent when you don't have a father figure, uh, a robust father figure who's there for his children. However, I've made meaning Uh, that experience purposeful and meaningful because it it has been a factor that has inspired my career and so if you're struggling if you're battling with self-acceptance if there's something in your life that you're really struggling with do inbox me Um, potentially we can you know I can just maybe give you some insights that might shift your thinking a little bit but also I think it's important to know that how can you make you know one question and it may not be for you you may want to be angry and not everybody reaches this level but one way to surge forward is how can you make meaning and purpose out of this to help other people going through something similar and my belief is that by doing so inadvertently you also benefit from doing that yourself there's a beautiful reciprocal process that happens because you make that adverse experience meaningful. That's my hope for you. Remember, do take care of you, because if you don't, who will?